Rev up your engine! Accelerator X says, Scotty, I'm starting at an Audi dealership on Monday. I have four years of experience. I pretty much replace anything. Not good at diagnostic. How much should I get paid? I'm starting at 18. I assume you're talking about you're starting at $18 an hour. That is extremely low pay for a mechanic that has four years of experience. But that pretty much shows what's happening in our society. The owners, the people with the money are getting greedier and greedier. They pay the workers less and less while they take more and more. You go into an Audi dealer, what are they charging? I know in Houston they were charging like $160 an hour labor. Just think, if they're charging $160 and they're paying you $18, you're getting the wrong end of the deal there. What I advise you to do, you're going to stay there, work there, learn everything you can, then start your own business doing it. You'll be a lot better off. You can get the experience there, and then the people that do own Audis and get tired of being ripped off at the Audi dealer, you can give them a better deal because you'll know how to fix it, yet you won't be making $18 an hour. You'll make a lot more, but you don't have to charge the outrageous rates that the dealer has, and you'll do like I did in my business. You'll be busy all the time because you do good work, and you don't do it for free, but you do it for a fair price instead of the outrageous ripoff price that the dealers charge. Mark Dennison says, why are PT Cruisers so hated? I got no 4.2.4 turbo, and I love it. The reason they're hated is, one, they're all made in Mexico. The quality control is, and their engines notoriously blow head gaskets and the transmissions go out. Some people like certain cars, but every customer of mine who bought a PT Cruiser, they ended up hating the vehicle because they either blew head gaskets or the transmission went out or both. They just, you know, see, they don't make them anymore. They were cool looking. It was a nice design. It's kind of like retro gangster style, right? And it's typical for Chrysler. They're all style and no function. Chrysler's always made beautiful looking cars, but they generally don't hold up over time. And those PT Cruisers, whoo-wee, did they fall apart as they age. You can pick them up dirt cheap, but they're going to fall apart as they get older. But if you're the type of guy who really takes care and don't do much mileage driving, they can still last. For the average American, they were horrid vehicles. BS Freak 88 says, Scotty, can I put very high octane like 110 in a regular engine? You can, but you'd be wasting your money. A regular engine is made to run on regular octane, and regular octane is actually more explosive than high octane. The reason high octane is high is because the old years and years ago, racing engines had really high compression ratios. And if you used regular gas, it would explode by the compression before the spark plug ignited it, and the engines would knock. So they used high octane gasoline. Nowadays, everything's run by computer and don't need such high octane gas. You got a normal car, you put the fancy gasoline in, can actually run worse. So <laughs> it'd be stupid to do. Now, there's a lot of guys out there who say you got a, a 67 Camaro or something that was made for high test. Yeah, you can run that in. Them. They were made for gas you can't even buy at the pump anymore. But for a regular one, not only you waste your money, but it'll probably end up running worse in the long run. Jeremy Griffith says, Scotty, O2 VW Passat. My oil light came on. Someone said a gas station helped my wife and overfilled it by a quart. Now it's leaking everywhere. What can I do? Help. Well, if it's a real gas station like Chevron or Shell, I would go back and I would make them pay for the repairs because they did it. They put too much oil in it. They're hiring people that do that. That's their problem. Unfortunately, when you put too much oil in, it can blow the seals. Let the oil out so that it's still at just full and not over full. Pray it didn't blow a seal out. Maybe it just made them leak, and if you put it back to regular, it won't leak, but it may have blown the seals. If it does, I would contact the station because, say, they blew the rear main seal. You got to pull the engine out to replace it. Big, expensive job. Big, if it's a big oil company, they got billions of dollars. Make them pay for it for having people that don't know what they're doing working there. Harrison says, Scotty, is there an easy way to change the blend door from my 04 Ford Ranger? The actuator is good and the door hinges drip. Well, unfortunately, you got to take most of the dash apart for it. But if you know any tiny people with tiny hands, maybe they could crawl under there and get their hands in to try to get to it. But the labor book on that is like seven hours labor. It's a very expensive job to pay an actual mechanic. You got to take all the dash. Everything's got to be taken apart. There's a royal pain in the rear end. They've been that way for a long time. It's kind of a stupid design to put all that crap 
over it because it's plastic and you know eventually it's going to break. In the olden days I had a Ford Maverick and I could change the heater core and that thing in half an hour. It was no big deal. But it didn't have all that blend door nonsense. It had just a rod you pushed and then that would open and close and it was a cable. Very simple stuff. But now they're all electronic and that's what happens. You put electronic plastic parts in cars. A giant mess that costs a fortune to fix when it breaks. Cole U.S. says the dealer wants 2700 bucks for an oil pan gasket my 2012 BMW 535. I think it's insane and I'll try it myself. What are your thoughts? Well yeah I'd never buy a BMW in the first place. That's my thoughts. But that's dealers. They overcharge for everything and they charge you for stuff that they don't even do half the time. I had a customer who went to a BMW dealer decades ago. She had her car maintained. Once it was out of warranty she brought it to me. She said transmission feels weird. She brought it to me. It was out of warranty and I drained the fluid out and it came out like molasses. I said you've had never had your fluid changed. And she said I paid him for four fluid changes at the dealer. And obviously they had never ever changed the fluid. And they charged her all this money for doing it. That's the way those guys are. Now they charge you for pulling the engine and all that other crap. There are easier ways that if you want to remove motor mount bolts, jack it up enough to get enough room to get it off. It isn't all that horrendous of a job and it's certainly not worth 2700 bucks. Give it a try yourself. You might get one of those nice chilt manuals or a climber manual or a Haynes manual and see if you want to try it yourself. And if you do, great. You're going to save a whole bunch of money. A Black Master Splendor says, Scotty, my car just got totaled. Unfortunately, and I'm looking for a new car. I've been looking at an 05 Acura RL V6 for 65 50. 135,000 miles. This is a good buy. I know they're not as common as the TLs. Well, they're not as common, but they're, you know, they're same basic vehicles. Those are excellent vehicles. You got to have the transmission checked out. Pay a mechanic to check it. Never buy a used Acura without a mechanic checking it because you can't trust anybody with any used cars anyways. Wrecked, flooded, stolen, who knows? A mechanic can see that. But with that vehicle, you need a guy like me on a dealer level scan tool. Watch all the data. You can't hide from that data. You just can't hide. And so even if they disconnected stuff, off, pulled lights off the dash so warning lights don't come on it'll show on that computer and if they say it's okay hey it can be a great car now 135,000 miles for a 16 year old Acura I don't know if I'd pay 65 I've had people buy them for five and got a pretty good deal I'd try to pay less because you're not going to get any guarantee Nick says good morning I got a 01 Lexus RX 300 with a V6 this is an interference engine I need to know to change the timing belt can I put it off all the 300 V6s, which are 3,000 cc's that Toyota and Lexus made, are non-interference engines that have timing belts on them. My wife CS300 has one. It's never been changed. 19 years old. Still works perfectly fine. They're pretty well-made vehicles. But if they do break, there's no damage done. You just have to take them apart and put a new belt in. So don't worry. If you want to wait, go ahead and wait. It is not an interference engine. Got a Mustang with subframe damage. Shop told me it'd be about 3K. I hit a ditch at 25. Does that sound right? Okay. Here's the problem. I'm sure you're talking about a modern Mustang, right? Well, they're unibody construction. They don't have a big solid frame like old cars did. And the big solid frames, hey, they're generally, they won't bend. And if they do, they can be repaired. Like modern vehicles having the unibody construction where the body and the frame is basically one piece, well, it costs a lot of money to fix it right. And if you have a guy doing it, you want to have some kind of backup. Ask people around, did they use this company before? Did they good do a good job? Because framework isn't easy to do. Back in Houston, I knew people, Cotton Brothers, they did good framework. They knew what they were doing, but I also met a lot of guys that did horrible framework. So you want to make sure they know what they're doing. But 25 miles an hour hitting the ditch, that's plenty enough to bend them in a modern car because it's not the big old thick steel frame with a body bolted on anymore. The unibody's a lot thinner. You jack in the wrong part of a modern car, you'll bend it. <laughs> <laughs> Pinot Golf says, morning Scotty, my dad's about to buy a used 05 F-150 V8 with 175,000 kilometers, so that's what, 90-something thousand miles. Any thoughts on it? Okay, those can be great trucks. It's an older truck, but if they can prove that's the real mileage and the mechanic says it's good, buy it because you said it's got the V8. Those V8 engines can run forever if you take care of them. They're very good trucks. They didn't have that EcoBoost nonsense that they're using today. It's a good truck. As long as some mechanic says it's a good truck, now and the engine and transmission are still in good shape, go ahead and buy it, especially if they can prove that that's the real mileage. Danielle DeLuca says, I have to buy a forklift. What is the best engine, Toyota, Linda, or Yale? 
Toyota by far. Toyota made great forklifts. And they got great engines in them. People don't particularly care about Japanese in the United States, but they made one of the best forklifts in the world, and people bought them. I've seen those things when they're 35, 40 years old, and they're still going strong. They make excellent forklifts. Not that many people buy forklifts, but they do make really good forklifts. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.